Leo is your training de dummy because fuck Leo. I get it. Trust me, I get it. <laughs> Irene just said hers is purple chip. Wow. So Pyramid Plaza asks, how do you deal with opponents who are constantly jumping? Well, there's two general tools you have for constantly jumping, but the main thing you got to keep in mind is that in Guilty Gear, what goes up must come down, right? So your best option uh, when you are doing, when, you're, when, when someone's staying in the air, is to figure out where they're going to land and put a button that'll fuck them up. You can 6P, depending on your character, you can 6H. Everyone has a good air throw, so air throw is always an option if you know where they're going to go, right? But fundamentally, you can think of it a lot like Smash, right? Uh, in Smash, there's a lot of game that's built around figuring out how the other person is going to get back to the platform, right? Because you're either knocked off the side of the platform or you're up, right? But gravity will always demand that you come down eventually. And so the person on the bottom is just going to wait for you, right? And sometimes you're going to engage by chasing after them. And other times you're going to engage by catching them on the landing. But fundamentally, what you want to do is you want to figure out where they're going to be. This game, the neutral in this game, is all about figuring out where the other person is going to be and putting a button that they, that they will lose to when they're there, right? So they're jumping around a lot, depending on what they're doing and who the character is. Maybe air throw is your best option. Maybe you just jump at them and air throw. Or maybe you catch them coming down with a 6P or 2H. Depends on your character, depends on the matchup. But the basic concept is put a hitbox between you and them, right? And in order to do that, you're gonna have to understand the character's movement options, right? Do they have uh, do they have a double jump? Probably. Do they have a triple jump? Probably not, unless you're playing against Chip. Do they have an air dash? Yeah, unless it's Potemkin. Do they have two air dashes? Well, then you're playing against Miz Dizzy and Millian, right? Uh, different characters will also have different moves that move them around in the air, right? So, uh, you're going to have to understand all of the character, all of your opponent character's movement options as well as your own if you want to figure out how to chase someone down and catch and punish them for jumping. Jumping being in the air is not a, is not always a great idea in this game, right? This game gives you a lot of ways to move in the area in the air, especially if you play chip. But uh, the fact is that because gravity is inescapable, uh, you are uh, you, you, someone, someone's position, someone's will always have to come down to the ground. You'll always be able to catch them, right? So if you're chasing, but you're getting punished for trying to catch them, then you're either not finding, you're not either, you're either not finding them at the right place, right? You don't want to chase after them. You want to go to where they are going to be, right? If you're chasing after them, you're going to get hit. But if you're going to where, the, where you think they're going to be and you're get, you're still getting punished, then you're just pressing the wrong button. You need to choose something better, right? That's basically it. If you're, yeah, you don't want to chase people. You want to intercept them, right? It's a lot like Smash. Anyway, with that, we'll go ahead and start our warm up for today. So uh, if you got Chip uh, on deck in training mode, let me know if you're ready to go. We're listening to A Sense of Amarillo by Satkirin Mantra. That's a hell of a name. All right, Rao Man's ready. Who else is ready? Who else is joining us for today's uh, workout session? Pyramid, no problem, homie. Intercept. That's right. Yeah, chasing no good. And in general, the way you can think about it is most most characters do not have good options if they're in the air for coming straight down. What up, dried ankles? Uh, most characters, like most attacks in this game do not have hitboxes that go very deep uh, vertically from the air, right? Because you're underneath someone, you can probably 6P them or whatever. And you can always air throw them. If you're underneath, if you're if you are below someone, if you're lower than them on screen, uh, you have air throw priority, basically. Yeah, Ram, Biken. There's a couple notable exceptions, but anyway, tell me who else is ready? Who else wants to participate in today? I can wait all day, but y'all know this shit is good for you, homie. So y'all got to keep doing it. <laughs> Open chip up. Get to training mode. We oh, soul strains in there. Yeah. Who else? Who else we got? Oh, Pyramid Plaza in there. I get one more. Just one more. One more. One of these days, y'all are going to leave me hanging. And we're just going to sit here. And we're just going to listen to these delightful beats. Not even beats. There's no beats in here. There's just notes. Yeah. We're just going to hang out. 10 minutes. 20 minutes. Just going to hang out until someone else decides to join us. It's going to be awesome. 
Is this, is this low enough to be considered ASMR? That's right, Mappuccino. We got you in there. You might want to learn something about this character that constantly beats you up whenever... <laughs> Yo, Animal Crossing furniture can wait. Is, is this low? Should I, should I be whispering more? It's kind of like this, right? I should, be, I should be talking more like this. But with like a little bit more lip smacking or something, I think. I don't really know how ASMR works. If I hit the buttons, is this too loud for ASMR? I feel like it might be, but I don't know. What up, Dechoe? Good to see you. Imagine Kinako barking loudly right now, but like an ASMR bark. Arf, arf, arf. All right, Mappuccino, we got you in there. Hey, Dechoe's done with finals. That's what's up. So we're going to start with just the basics. 5K, close S, 2D, back dash. 5K, close S, 2D, back dash. 5K, close S, 2D, back dash. Simple three hit combo. When was the last time you hit a three hit combo? I don't know if any of y'all ever watched that legacy combo video by James Chen and a bunch of other people called Ode to the Two Hit Combo. I think it played at Evo 2003. It was a real good one. There's a bunch of two hit combos in a bunch of different games. And at the end they teased an Ode to the Three Hit Combo, but they never did it. I felt a little deceived. I think, Dolphinian, I think that shiver down your spine is supposed to be a good feeling for some people. But yeah, I get it if you can't, if, if it's not quite your thing. Just take them back and forth. We're just warming our hands up. Detroit, you're going to get that internship. You're going to get that inter internship. And you're going to show them how good you are at doing chips, three hit combos. And they'll just be like, holy shit. You've been, pro you've been promoted to regional manager. Congratulations, Detroit. Hey, what up, JPB? Good to see you. Thanks for streaming earlier. It's cool to watch your ma your match analysis. Also, I can't believe your daughter murdered me live on stream. That's fucked up. Saying Guilty Gear is boring. What does she know? She's just a dang kid. <laughs> Her art was pretty cool, though. Went through, like... <laughs> Murdered a whole box of markers just to make that picture. That's that's some real artistry. <laughs> Blaze boomers. Yeah, it says. Right, just there we go. We're just we're just practicing kicking Slayer in the dick multiple times and then tripping him. It's okay, he's a vampire. Daphonics, it's all good. Just unroll your yoga mat and get in there. Left to right. Just very simple combo. We'll do one more lap. Just listen to those buttons click. Oh, how'd I drop this one? Man. Hey, what up, Zwei? Good to see you. We're just doing our warm ups, baby. Of course. My pleasure. All right. Now we'll reset to the middle. Oh, that wasn't it. That was a burst. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with the FTC Oki. If y'all don't know how to do the FTC Oki, it's real easy. First, you start by tapping 6-6 six, six to dash, and then eight to jump, to get a neutral jump out of dash. And notice it still moves them forward a lot, right? So you can just practice that. It's all good, Zwei, so you reset whenever you feel like. Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me, one second. Just get, get, get going with that 668, keeping those dashes coming in. Dash and a neutral jump. If you do it too fast, then you'll get a, uh, you'll get, you'll get a jump forward, which is definitely not what you want. It's okay if you get it, but it's not what you wanted. Uh, the Midwest Online Weekly, I forget what it was called, um, but I think it was based out of St. Louis. You can definitely at Mr. K on Twitter. I think it's STL Mr. K, and he'll help you find it. Because Mr. K knows all about those online weeklies. Shout out to the Midwest scene. They've been holding it down for Guilty Gear for a minute. What up, Grimmage? All right. Once you got the 668, now what we're going to add is you're going to hold one once you're in the air, like this, down back. And then you're going to piano your fingers across kick and slash. And you're going to hold the button down for just a little bit. So you get the FD break. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, I messed up. You want to press it at the height of your, your jump if you can. Exit cool was good. This is cool because it stops chip in midair. So now you're going to append that to the combo we just did. 
There you go. You're going to drop with JH and then hit 5K into 2D. When you get in the corner, go ahead and throw him. Do your combo again. And just land. If you delay the JH a little bit, you can get it so it only hits once, which is also pretty cool because it makes it a little bit harder to follow or to block a follow-up afterwards if you go with like a 2K. This is just a basic mix-up, and you can build off of it as much as you like. It's I'm giving you the ingredients and a sample recipe, but what you do with this character is ultimately your own. It's one of the cool things, especially it's true about every Guilty Gear character, but especially Chip. Chip is one of those characters where he's got so many tools that no one can really tell you the best, the single best way to use those tools. And so you get to kind of concoct your own play style. It's really cool. So yeah, just keep on doing this FDC Oki. Ooh. Sometimes the outcome make you may surprise you. Hey, what up, Bonjour? You're gonna give me the keys to your Lambo? That's what's up. Keep on practicing that FDC Oki. It's okay if you mess it up in training mode. You want to think of all the mess ups that you're doing in training mode as mistakes you make here so that you don't have to make it in a match, right? Every dropped combo here is a dropped combo that you're saving yourself from in grand finals for Wednesday night fights. Damn, Bonjourn. Europa, just just picked up the Europa Universalis 4 DLC. Well, there goes our Venom matchup practice. <laughs> just go ahead and keep running that B and B. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna add one more layer to this. You already know what it is. Instead of doing the faultless defense cancel, you're just gonna coast right over Slayer and cross him up with the JH. And yeah, that, that new Paper Mario shit looked pretty fly. Does anyone say that anymore? Fly is just straight up dated, right? No one's saying that shit. It's okay. I'm old. <laughs> I'm a blaze boomer. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and hit him with the cross-up now. Yeah, Rad is Rad is not quite like cool levels of timeless, but it's pretty close. Rad is rad. Rad. Oh. It's true. You can say anything. Slapped. Slapped is oh we got Rad Mad Dad in here. Hell yeah. It's okay, Kango. Playing Guilty Gear makes you perpetually in your early 30s. That's how this shit works. Alright. So now, off this, the request today was from one bin to work on some corner oki, so that's what we're gonna do. So you already have the starting point to your corner oki, because we've done it before. It's your B and B into uh, where you go into 2D, 236 S, 623 H, J D, and then 623 or uh, 236 P, right? Or if you want to use move names, it is uh Resho Shinkiro. Jump Dust, Alpha Blade, hold P, and then Alpha Blade again. So we're just gonna do this. Ooh. We're just gonna do this one right here. No, not like that. I messed up. Do this one. Yeah. And listen to Chip yell Alpha, Alpha. Anyone ever watch that old cartoon that was on MTV for a minute? I think it was called Undergrads. And the, the like, the frat guy that they made fun of, or that that you know, was one of the characters, was always going out for a fraternity called Alpha Alpha. That's Chip. Ah, yes, this is why he's talking about the good old days when Chip was top tier for stupid reasons. Ooh. So this is this is a neat combo. Oh, this is Rocco. Yeah, Grimmin knows what's up. So this is a neat combo because you don't have to spend any extra meter to get damage, right? Because you knock him into the corner, whoo, because you knock him into the corner, you just get some free extra damage. But there's more that we can do as Chip 
once you've got them in the corner. So this is this is the entry level corner combo, right? It's okay. But the problem is that it knocks them back out of the corner, and you want to keep them in the corner. So what are we going to do? Well, there's a couple things we can do. And it all starts, It's it, a lot of it is based off of Chip's wall cling. So today, we're going to start using Chip's wall cling and some other options, but mostly wall cling, to set up some corner oki, right? This is the shit that you see me doing in tournament a lot. To start with, uh, let's see, what's the, what's the easiest one to do? Well, I don't know if this is the easiest one to do, but it's probably one of the best. So we'll start with uh, Uncling Alpha Blade, right? So, so far, what, what I've had you do is the easy wall alpha, right? Here, fold P, press P again to get the wall alpha. The problem is that that wall alpha uh, takes them out of the corner. So what you can do instead is you can do this. Yeah. So what happened there was uh, Chip did Alpha Blade, and then instead of doing the wall alpha, he goes Alpha, then he presses uh, back, right, into the corner, so it'd be four, because it's a cross it. Yeah, you uncling by pressing four. And then after you uncling, as quickly as possible, you do another Alpha Blade. And the way you can think about this motion is that, so alpha, alpha blade is uh, quarter circle four, right? S uh, two, three, six, and punch. You can think of this as basically a half circle forward motion, right? So you start at four, you go four, one, two, three, six, and that four is your uncling. But you, you, ooh, you have to time it, right? This is kind of tricky. It took me a little while to get the hang of but you should go ahead and try it. Because if you start now, you might get good at it eventually. You're always gonna suck at this in the very beginning, but the more you do it, the better you'll get. Hell yeah, Daft Phonics, that's what's up. You can listen to the sound of my hands. Oh, messed up, that's okay. This requires pretty specific timing. And the reason the timing is specific is because after you uncling, there's a little while where you have to stay in the cling before you can uh, before you can uncling. You can't just hold back. You have to hold it for a little bit and then tap, right? Or you know, start your start your half circle forward, right? Am I a chip main? Yes I am. That's why it's all over my stream layout. What if you can do the uncling alpha blade, and it's okay if you can't, this will take some time. After you're la you land, go ahead and just do your 2-2-H teleport to get right back on top of them. It's real nasty. And you can just practice this loop over and over. Oop, I messed up. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. But yeah, the, the reason this is such good oki, it is shark slippers, absolutely. <laughs> One bin, that's what's up. Yeah, you don't have to think of it as two separate motions. It's just one motion that you time right. And shark slippers, there is a playlist with a whole bunch of, of videos like this. If you'd like to learn chip 30 minutes at a time, just doing, we're doing guided training mode tutorials. Anyone can join and just get a little bit better than they were when they started the day. Thanks to the link, Growl Man. So yeah, you can just practice the uncling alpha, right? Now, the cool thing about the setup is that, as you can see, it leaves Slayer in the corner. Hey, Treewee, thank you so much for the 18 months. And hell yeah, Soulstream. Music is a huge part of what determines your mood when you're playing fighting games. And having music that doesn't change when the, when the match starts and ends is really big for me when it comes to managing my mood, right? So the thing about this setup is you'll notice that right now, the way the positioning works, I'm always landing in front of Slayer, but it's kind of hard to tell. Kango, you just couldn't sit on that, could you? <laughs> so the way that Chip's 2-2-H teleport works is 
it will cross up the opponent, but only if they are within a certain range. And if he doesn't, then he'll land kind of on top of them, right? However, when you get better at the setup, and I'm actually not very good at this, but if you get better at the setup, you can kind of control uh, which side he lands on. I think you can just walk forward a little bit. There's something. There's also, there are changes that you can make in, in how you time the uncling alpha blade to, to change whether you go left or right. Yeah. So that was it, I crossed him up there. In practice though, a lot of people, if they don't know how the setup works, just get hit. Oh, that's right. I think I can, I think when I'm doing the, the teleport input, I think I can go one, two. And th that'll put me forward just enough. Oop. Oh, I messed up. Anyway, focus on the uncling alpha blade for now. Oops. You don't have to worry about crossing up yet. You can get that later if you want it. But the nice thing about landing uh, on the same side is that it keeps Slayer in the corner, which is what we want, right? Often with Chip, you'll have to choose between do you want a good knockdown and Oki setup or do you want damage? But if you are technically skilled, you can often find uh, opportunities where you can get both. The damage on this is pretty good and so is the setup. We'll go ahead and take it to the other side now. Same deal. Oh. Sometimes you mess up, that's okay. Oh no. That's what's up. Yeah, just hit that half circle forward, that's all you need. And then sometimes, yeah, what up, Sin? You don't have to come down. Oh, you don't have to come down with the JH after the teleport either. You can just go for uh, empty low if you want. A savvy opponent will probably try and blitz you here, and so punishing that blitz attempt will make them waste their meter and maybe be scared off of using blitz again for a little while. Yeah, just get that uncling wall alpha. Practice both sides. Make sure you switch back and forth. We're going to go ahead and let, let it drop just so Slayer can get a chance to recover his hit points. He is a vampire, so he can recover his hit points very quickly. <laughs> just keep on doing that combo. If you're messing it up, it's okay. It took me weeks. It took me weeks of practicing this combo to the point where I felt just even a little bit confident. And some of it was because I actually had to practice this combo on a keyboard first because that was how I learned the timing for unclaim. It can it can often be really difficult to uh, it can often be really difficult to uh, learn the like minute details about what you can do and when when you're using a stick, especially if you're kind of new to fighting games because um, sticks are a little bit harder to be really accurate with. Right, so I actually tested this on a keyboard, and that was uh, the kind of the breakthrough that I had. And the more you practice these combos, the more you'll actually learn like ways to salvage situations when you drop the combo. Right, you do this combo a hundred times, you'll probably find you'll probably find that you drop the combo at the same point or at a couple of, of similar points. Right, and so once you learn to recognize those situations, you can actually still play off of them. It's pretty cool. The one bin asks, if I'm getting JP instead of wall claim, that's probably because I missed a diagonal, right? You want, if you're getting JP instead of wall air claim, so you should just be holding punch, right, to get the wall claim. If you're get, if you're missing uncling, yeah, so, Rao man, there are a bunch of different setups that I use. Uh, if you got J, JP instead of wall air claim, are you, which, which, which direction are you jumping? We need to figure out the clues. We're gonna solve this this mystery one bit. The case of the missing uncling alpha. Hey, 
Luca Xerox. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the crew. What up, Isaiah McKnight? Good to see you. So you're facing right. Okay. Yeah, sometimes you get it and then it goes away and eventually you'll get it again. Don't trip. If you're getting unclinged JP, then you're probably pressing, ah, I see. If you're getting unclinged JP, then you're probably pressing the button too quickly, right? You're not finishing the, the alpha blade motion. And so you're just landing with JP. Um, you may also be missing a diagonal, but you actually remember for this motion, like this, the, the half circle forward is not, you don't actually need the back diagonal. You only need the forward diagonal to get it. Anyway. So that was uncling alpha. It's a good thing to, to practice. And the reason this thing is so good is because the situation you get after that uncling alpha lets you teleport back in and keep Slayer in the corner, right? It lets you get some pretty good oak. That JH, I think, can hit meaty if you time it right, which means that they can't like wake up air throw you or anything like that. Um, even stuff like 6P, like depending on the character, will often you know get stuffed just because they're still in startup for a while. So it's really good, but you don't want to just do that, right? There are a whole bunch of other options that Chip has at his disposal. So the next thing we're going to do is called Beyblade, and it, it starts from a similar place, right? So you're gonna hang out and wall cling for just a little bit. And instead of unclinging, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tap uh, forward while you're clinging. And look what Chip does. He dashes down to the ground, right? Now when he dashes down to the ground, he actually still has his air options. We didn't use his air options. So Shinkiro here puts you into the air, but after you use Shinkiro, you can still double jump, you can still uh, you can still air dash, you can still do all kinds of shit, right? So Shinkido puts us in the air, right? We can still do stuff. We can, you can walk up and down on the wall if you want. Hell yeah. But what we're going to do is we're going to tap forward to hop or to, to dive down. But then almost immediately, you're going to jump straight up. And you want to jump up over Slayer. It's going to look like this. Oop, not like that. Just like that, right? Now, actually, ideally, you want to land in a position where Slayer's back is still in the corner. So, yeah, there we go. But you can make it pretty ambiguous if you want. Hey, Isaiah McKnight, thank you so much for the prime, homie. I appreciate your support. So, yeah, get used to this combo and just end on the, the jump for now. Let's work on that part. And if you're, if you're messing up, let me know how so we can help you fix it. Even if you don't get it today, we should at least know what you're doing and where you're uh, a little off so that we can make it better for next time. Ooh, landed on the other side, that's okay. Yeah, so once you get the hang of that, it's okay if you don't, but the next thing we're gonna do, uh, yeah, one bin, I did mention that earlier. There's a minimum length of time that you need to be able to, to, to wall cling before it'll let you uncling. And figuring out that time is part of the learning curve of this combo, right? Um, so yeah, once once you've you've gotten a little more comfortable with the dash down into the neutral double jump up, you're gonna find out why the setup is called the Beyblade, right? What you're gonna do is very early on in your in the double jump, you're gonna press JS. It's gonna look like this. Just look at that. Yeah, I'm getting that Beyblade started. And the idea is that that JS is actually supposed to, to whiff. The goal of this JS is to make Chip's landing time a little bit more obscure, right? It's essentially, it's a frame kill, right? We wanna land on Slayer so that we attack right when he's getting up. And the, the basic uh, jump timing doesn't make this easy, right? So we're using JS. And then after that JS is over, you're gonna try and do another JS. And it's gonna be a little bit lower to the ground. Now, ideally, this JS will combo the second one. Well. But it takes a little time. I mess it up all the time, so don't worry about it. And it takes a little while to learn the timing that you can you can press JS after that first JS is over. 
So just play with it for a little while. There you go. That's. Woo. There, so that one comboed, but it pushed Slayer out of the corner. You got some wins, some losses. It's all right. I think we want to do that one a little bit deeper. It's funny because you can either pull, make this combo by doing the second JS early or by doing it late. We're going to try and do the early ones, though. I think those are a little bit better. Ooh, messed up. Ooh. Just keep it up. There we go. Pop them out of the corner, it's all right. Keep them in there. Chip's got a whole lot of hard stuff to do. You're gonna mess up stuff every now and then. It's okay. That's part of Guilty here. Woo! A little too far away there. Oh, there we go, that one was nice. Yeah, so this is the late JS working out for us. Oh, messed up a little bit there, but it's okay. Now we're going to take him to the other side and practice the other side. Same thing. Yeah, you do that, Graffiti Bandit. You do whatever you want. If you mess up the JS, it's okay. You can still use it as a setup for an empty jump low. The, th the reason the setup works is because it's hard to tell when Chip is going to land, right? And so the defender has to figure out when to switch their block, and it's hard. Sometimes the JS, th that JS whiffs, and it doesn't matter because they're expecting it to hit. So you can just go in with a low. Yeah, shoutouts to Rowl Man. He's the most hospitable person on Twitch. Said it before and I'll say it again. Rowl Man is the reason why the stream is cool. I'm just a jerk up here playing fighting games. Go ahead and pop them back in the corner. Do a couple more laps. Yeah, there we go. Some good shit. See, it's not so hard. If you're not getting it now, maybe you'll get it tomorrow. Maybe you'll get it the day after that. The fact is, Whoever you're trying to do this to probably won't even notice if you're messing it up. Because no matter what, they're probably going to get hit by it, even if you're not doing it 100% correctly. Guilty gear. There were a lot of times, actually, where I, I would watch match videos and I'd be like, wow, how did, why, I can't understand why this person in this situation did this thing, right? Like, I couldn't understand the reason why a top player would do certain things. I just chalked it up to me not understanding the game. And then as I get got further and further, and I got to know the game better, I would look at some of that shit and be like, oh, they just fucked up. They didn't mean to do that. They're trying to do something else, but they messed up uh, their execution or their position or something. And so uh, they got something else instead. They just decided to roll with it. But it took me a while to get there. Sometimes messing things up ends up working out for you. Do one more good one. Let's get one more good one. Oh, one more. We won't. We won't end it on that. Now. Yeah, that felt good. Okay, the next one we're gonna run. This is gonna be our last uh, Oki drill for the day. Is instead of. Whew, oh, next a little stiff now. 
I'm gonna shake it off. Um, instead of clinging on that first alpha blade, we're actually just gonna let it rock. So the combo's gonna look like this. Boom, no cling. The reason we do this is because if you wall cling, so when you do alpha blade in midair, uh, alpha blade has some landing recovery, right? So if I do if I do air alpha blade, it takes Chip a little bit of time. You can see him kind of, it, it takes him some time to get up, right? He does alpha blade and then he crouches and then he stands. So if I hold, if I hold up, right, because I want to jump again, you can see how long he's stuck in landing recovery. It's a long time, right? This out, this landing recovery doesn't go away if you do other shit before touching the ground. So when we do alpha blade and then we land, we still have that landing recovery, no matter what. I think I think there are actually ways to like erase it. I don't remember what they are. Um, but I, I do think, in, in, from what I remember, in most situations, if you have landing recovery on a move, you take that with you. Yeah, see? You can see me mash, but there's a little bit of a delay before the punch comes out, because I gotta go through landing recovery. So, you, so if, if your Oki has you landing from wall cling at some point, you, you might not want to wall cling after the alpha blade, right? Because you're gonna have that landing recovery, it might fuck up your timing. So instead, we're just going to let the alpha blade rock like that. But when you land, you're going to jump back up onto the wall and cling. So the input for this, you can't use you can't hold a button now. You have to you have to do uh, jump up or jump back to make sure you're against the wall. It's usually easier to go jump back. And then you're going to do uh, six and then four like that. So the input I'm doing here is uh, seven, six, four. And you don't want to be too high. You don't want to be too, too low. You want to be. You want. I think you probably want your feet at around uh, at around Slayer's head to start, right? So you're gonna land from the alpha blade, and then you're gonna jump up. And you're gonna wall cling, and then you're gonna press six to go off uh, to go off the wall. And then when you've traveled a little bit, you're gonna press four four to air dash back in. So the whole setup's gonna look like this. You're gonna air dash, and then you're gonna hit JH. Oop, I messed up. We'll try that again. The setup's gonna look like this. If that was slower, that wouldn't have worked. Ooh. But that's the idea. Ooh. If you do if you do the wall cling a little too low, then you won't have time to air dash. So you do need to be a certain height off the ground for this to work. Graffiti Bandit, I know that feel, man. <laughs> Just keep on trying this for a little bit. Cool. If you do it a little bit lower, sometimes it'll only hit once, which is cool. It can be confusing. Oop, messed up there, it's okay. Oh. funny. I normally don't mess up the, the, the cling here, but I'm thinking about it too much. <laughs> oh, one thing that actually helps me a lot here is uh, make sure that when you jump back with the seven input, you're tapping. Don't hold. It'll make it harder for you to get the rest of the cling. Keep it up. Ooh. Oh. See, I messed up there and got air dash back into the corner. That can actually have its own perks, though. That will be blitz, which a lot of people will do when they see this Oki coming. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch to the other side now. Just listen to the pitter patter of Chip's tiny feet. on getting those reps and oh drop there it's okay so 
Again, if you're not getting it, it's all right. Maybe you'll get it tomorrow. Of course, in order to get it tomorrow, you would have to be practicing tomorrow. So I do hope that you'll practice tomorrow. You can watch this video on YouTube, and you can practice whenever you want. You can practice in your dreams. Just hook up some headphones or play this shit on your phone. What a bra. I want to see y'all practicing these combos in your sleep. That'd be tight as fuck. I wish I could practice combos in my sleep. Then I could always be labbing. That's right. It's nothing but Django Django echoing through the cavernous confines of your brain. All right, now we're gonna switch it up. We're actually gonna do something a little bit easier instead of doing the dash back. So the thing about a lot of this corner oki is that it loses to blitz, right? Because blitz covers left rights. Um, it doesn't, basically it doesn't matter what side you're hitting on for, for a blitz. As long as you're hitting mid or high, blitz will catch it. So if you wanna bait the blitz, what you wanna do is, instead of dashing back in, oops, instead of dashing back in for the JH, you're gonna do the same thing, but you're just gonna land in 2D. Now obviously this will lose to low blitz, but most people do not wake up low blitz this ship. And you might be thinking, hey, well, why not just do this one? And the reason is because you can get a lot more damage off, oops, off the, uh, the JH than you can off the 2D. So you wanna have all your options open. Yeah, you can absolutely low blitz. Low blitz is the highest risk wake up option in the game. <laughs> you are very specifically calling something out and you cannot react to the difference in timing between this and the low blitz, which means the low blitz is a hard guess. I think, I think Singa low blitzed me here and was able, unable to confirm off of it, but it was, it was a real smart low blitz. And low blitz, of course, loses to the JH, right? Low blitz will absolutely eat shit for that. And then you can get a big ass combo like this. Uh, low blitz does not beat mids. Low blitz only beats lows. If you hold on to a low, then it becomes, it covers everything. But low blitz in the beginning only catches lows. It's the hardest call out in the game. Good shit, Rao, man. You did the back dash. That's what's up. So now you can just oop, you can just mix the two together. You can alternate between the air dash and the 2D. Also, Soul Strain, I've def had that problem not only with, with video games, but actually with real fighting. Or I'll be too busy thinking about all the, the moves I want to practice or how, what I would want to do in this hypothetical fight situation that I've chore impeccably, impeccably choreographed in my head uh, that I can't get to sleep. That's why I'm saying I want to do this after I sleep. How much of playing fighting games is reacting to things? Uh, it's pretty important. but. The, the more you play, the easier it is to understand when you have to react to something. If you don't know when, if you don't have a thing in mind that you're trying to react to, uh, then you can't really react to stuff very easily, or at least it'll take a long time, right? And so first you need to learn what it is you should be reacting to stuff, right? There's some things that, in these games that aren't reactable, and if you hold yourself accountable to reacting to them, you're like, oh man, I suck because I couldn't react to that. Well, no, you don't suck, you just didn't realize that that's not supposed to be reactable, right? So part of the work is figuring out what you're supposed to be reacting to, and what you have to read, or what you just, uh, what you can beat with like, option selects, or correct decisions, or just not being there, right? Um, and then there are other things where you have to figure out what you're supposed to react to and when you're supposed to react to it, right? 5D, for example, is a good example. <laughs> 5D, for example, is a good example. This is absolutely reactable, right? 
I think this is like probably 25 frames startup or something like that. In general, you want to start looking to react stuff when it's around 18 frames and up. Anything under 18 frames, you're probably not reacting to that specific move, right? Now, in this case, the reason it's reactable is because there's that big ass spark telling you, hey, you got a block standing, right? And that happens, if not frame one, pretty close to it, right? So you can react to this. But if I'm up in your face doing a whole bunch of stuff and you don't know when that 5D is coming or when it might come, well, then it's gonna be a lot harder to react to it. And if I've got you thinking about, oh shit, I just got run up thrown. Oh shit, I got, I got eaten, a I ate a gamma blade. All this other stuff. And then I run up in 5D, yeah, then you got way too many things to try and think about and react to. So reacting is absolutely important, but your reactions get faster the more you learn about the game, right? And to take this Oki as an example, uh, you're not reacting to the difference between 2D um, and the JH, right? That's the, the difference in time between those two is just too big. I would not expect anyone to react to this. But what you can do is because they hit at different times, you can do what's called a fuzzy guard, right? Roth, don't worry about it. I gather from the question that you're pretty new to this, in which case dying from rushdown is totally normal. You get better at this game by understanding how it works. Lots of people think, oh, I'm, I'm too slow for fighting games. You're not too slow. You just don't know how to play the game yet. You're, you're, you're trying to think too much. If you're new in a fighting game, you don't get to think at all. You're too busy just trying to do the things that you're trying to do. It's not until you get a baseline level of comfort in the game that you are able to consciously think while playing a fighting game even just a little bit. And if you can't consciously think, you're not going to be reacting to stuff. So yeah, just keep on drilling these, these setups. Even if you don't play chip, you'll have an easier time understanding what's going to happen, right? Now, when I hit you with 2D in the corner, you'll know, oh shit, he's about to go for that wall mix. Well, I don't know what's coming, but maybe I can, I can lab this in training mode and figure out the fuzzy guard timing to block high low, so I don't have to worry about picking one or the other, right? Maybe I can learn the timing to jump out of some of this setups to make it a little bit less scary. That kind of stuff. The nice thing about Guilty Gear is that with pretty much any situation, there's always a way out. Sometimes that way involves reactions. Sometimes it involves uh, understanding option selects that cover multiple cases so you don't have to react. Sometimes you just gotta guess. All right, well, I think this seems like a good place to break for tonight. Um, Adapt asks, does TK Alpha give a good Oki off of wall cling? Uh, no, because you're usually too low to wall cling. See? Um, so if I do T TK Alpha, I can't wall cling unless I'm like way the hell up here. And also, it's gonna it's gonna pop Slayer out of the corner, I think. Uh, well, actually, I guess it depends on where I hit him. So if he's in the corner. Yeah, I have to be at a certain height before it'll even get any wall cling at all. Yeah, you can you can do it. Yeah, you can you can you can absolutely do it, um, but it doesn't always give you good oki, and you're gonna have the landing recovery no matter what. Right. Anyway, uh, that was pretty cool. I think it. I, I don't know exactly when I started, but I think we just spent about 30 or 40 minutes drilling chip oki. These are actual drills that I do all the time. Um, because these are setups that I use all the time. And now you too can practice them. You can just watch this video whenever you want and run some chip Oki. But now it's 9.30, so let's go get our lobby games on.